when did you realize that you were not just like a, a tough kid growing up? When did you realize you were like the toughest in your area and you knew how to handle yourself and you could take this to the professional ranks? Um, I think it's because people always told me that I couldn't do certain things. You tell me I can't do something that I've got my heart set on and you'll eat my dust because the thing is I'm, I'm always determined to do it. I had a very bad relationship with my father. Um, he was one of the nastiest people I've ever met in my life. And he told me I'd never make it. Anytime the things were so tough, anytime anything was so blatantly tough and everything like that, I'd always say to myself, my father would be pleased if I failed. In spite of the fact we never liked each other, I would say my father was a deciding factor and made me as tough as I was. It was like a boy named Sue. <laughs> I know it well. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was no way on earth that he was going to see me fail. Mm. So every time things, every time, every time anything seemed impossible, just thinking about him made it possible. As far as the grappling goes, did you ever, uh, when did you start getting trained more formally in, you know, uh, hooking or, or you, know, you know, really learning how to lay it in and look after yourself in that way in, in a more formal setting? Well, the thing is, when I was brought up in South Wales, back in then, it was like it was like the the old Wild West. Who was the fastest gun? For whatever reason, people were admired if they could beat everybody else up. And the thing is, I had no shortage of people who were challengers and people I could challenge, because in those days. There was like the Abergavenny boys, they were farmers. They'd come up looking for our girls, and we didn't like that. <laughs> we always get into fights with the farmers. The miners themselves, I was having fights with different miners and everything like that for quite a while until they realized that they'd get their asses kicked. But also, there was a lot of um, Roman gypsies in that area. And as you know, the gypsies are the toughest people ever. You know, you get mixed up with one of them. I remember having a fight with um, a guy, they used to call him Harry the Gypo. He was much smaller than me, even though he was like many years older. He was about 18 when I was 13. And he absolutely cleaned my clock. He punched me in the face and spread my face all over the place. A number of years I got even with him. In, in a toilet of a cinema. <laughs> <laughs> he was midway through having a pee and I smashed his head into the um, into the tiles. I kicked him all over the place. It was actually blood on the ceiling. <laughs> but you do me wrong, I'll get you. What was the film playing? Do you remember? <laughs> um... I can't remember the movie. Now. <laughs> it's immaterial to the story. I just thought I'd just yeah. ask. There's, yeah. there's, there's, a, there's bad information out there that you trained in the snake pit in Wigan, but that's not true, is it? No, no. I mean, I, mean, I wrestled with lots of people from the snake pit. I mean, you, you wrestle with one of them. If you couldn't look after yourself, you were up shit's creek without a, a paddle. They were tough. And you had to learn, you had to learn to be a great wrestler because if you couldn't take it, you know, if you couldn't take it, if you couldn't take a hold, it simply wouldn't allow you to do it. So you had to be good. And the thing is, um, at that particular time, wrestling really started to boom in, um, in uh, Britain. Um, it was it was about the same time that um, the joint promotions start showing TV, and with that they went from running set 
the joint promotions went from running 700 shows a year in Britain to 4,500. They were showing, they were actually running 4,500 shows between the whole of joint promotions um, at one time and they needed bodies. Quite honestly, that's how I got my break. It wasn't until then that I actually started wrestling for joint promotions. Mm -hmm. They needed bodies. I tried to wrestle for, I, I tried to work for them for, oh, for years. And it just kept turning me away. But when, when it did that, then they, they needed somebody that knew how to put their boots on. And the thing is, I was wrestling um i was wrestling eight or nine times i was wrestling 40 times a month and uh, so is, I was wrestling is, more than once in one day and all the rest of it and you can bet your life that during a week i would be wrestling with a wigginer like every other night you had to be tough or die. And the thing is, you had to get really stuck in because if you couldn't really show you could look after yourself with joint promotions, they'd drop you, they'd drop you like a hot brick. Hmm. So you had to be good or get fired. So you never had like a, like a formal trainer or you, you never trained somewhere for years. You basically just learned how to wrestle by wrestling the best. Yes. Yes. Um, I had a guy that trained me in submission wrestling, uh, Mike Dimitri. He was my manager for, for a couple of years. And he was a junior heavyweight champion of the world um, in shoot wrestling. A straight wrestling. I learned quite a bit with him. Mm. But I would say the guy that I learned the most from was George Kidd who, as far as I'm concerned, was the best technical wrestler ever that I've ever come across in all my years. I've been, I was in a business for over 70 years. Give me, um, give me some more information about George Kidd, because what made him so tough uh, and, you know, you obviously very enamored with him and respected him. Why was he so great in your eyes? Why what? Why was he so great in your eyes, George Kidd? He was a he was a most fantastic uh, he was a most fantastic technical wrestler. You actually put something you put a hold on him and you were putting yourself in jeopardy. <laughs> and the thing is, I learned so much um, in the early days before I did that. I had a, I would actually have like a submission hold in my mind that I wanted to put on somebody. If they go on the defensive, it's very, really, very, really, it's really hard to apply it. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to put a submission hold on somebody that's, that's backing off, right? So the thing is, Napoleon Bonaparte said it best, never interrupt an enemy when they're making a mistake. Now, what I would do is put myself in harm's way. I purposely put myself in harm's way, and I learned from George Kidd that you feel them out and you can see where they were going. You'd actually let them sort of have something, but you'd have a counterhold. George Kidd was a master of counterholds. You touch him, you touch him, and you find yourself in a knot. And I learned a lot of that from him. But also, I'd learned an awful lot from fighting, not wrestling, not boxing, fighting with the gypsies and with the miners and with the farm boys. Hmm. I've got so many ways to hurt you, you'd have to invent new ways to scream. <laughs> <laughs>